they said, well, we don't really think that that's a subject that would do very well. Um, so they said, how about day to day? And we said, wow, terrific. And uh, I went home and told my wife. And uh, my wife, who is also an artist, had worked with uh, Jerry before. And they worked on a project on death and dying. Um, right, Jerry? Yep. You correct me. No, that's all right. Um, so I said, she said, I know this, this great artist. And uh, so we, uh, what did we do? We had beers. We had beers <laughs> at a Thai restaurant. Isn't that about the, the way it got started? Yeah, we met at, a, at Tommy Thai's. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, so we decided to do this thing. And it was, Jerry has really been a, a godsend for us because, uh, as you can see, Carrie and I are you know, gringos. And uh, I'm Italian and... and Carrie well, some much. Carrie <laughs> some much. <laughs> so we needed somebody that could help us out with this. But we were always been fascinated by the subject. I personally had, had been enthralled. Uh, my wife had a colleague, and he had a collection of calaveras. And I saw it about five or six years ago, and I'd asked him about it, and I said, you know, well, you know, what is this stuff? And he said, well, it's Day of the Dead. And I said, well, tell me more about this. And he didn't know a lot about it either, but it kind of had some similar ringings with me, uh, the connection with All Saints Day and Bones, and in Italy, especially in Southern Italy, there's uh, a lot of similarities, actually, between uh, a lot of the kind of the attitudes you see about Day of the Dead and uh, in my culture and the, the Latino culture. So um, I think this is a good jumping off point for me to let uh, the real expert tell you about the book and what's going on with the art, and that's Jerry. Thank you. I walk around, so can everybody hear me? Well, that's good. <laughs> um, we put together this book with the idea that Day to, the Day of the Dead or El Dia de los Muertos is celebrated through its artwork as well as uh, the celebration itself. And it falls shortly. You have All Hallows Eve, Halloween, and then you have Day of the Dead, which is November 2nd. And that is when the Mexican celebration part of it comes in. Um, we put this book together because the, uh, it's celebrated through the arts, primarily. And in Mexico, the way they do it is they use whatever they have uh, with them or close to them to create artwork. So you'll see paper mache, you'll see clay, you'll see uh, regular paper, you'll see anything and everything turned into artwork. And the major theme of it is the calavera or, or the skeleton, which per, uh, is predominant in the artwork. Now, the, the book that we put together, we, instead of making it an old, dusty uh, textbook, we wanted to contemporize it so people today can, can do the artwork and work with it. Um, if you haven't noticed, the Day of the Dead is growing in popularity in North America. And that's uh, partly because of the uh, increase in the, uh, in the Latino, Chicano, uh, Mexican population. And so that population is bringing parts of their celebrations. Now, to work a little bit backwards, I'll give you a little history of it. it uh, Day of the Dead originated uh, loosely with the Aztecs. And they, had, they had a long period where they celebrated those who had gone before them. And they had festivals, they had food, they had drink, they had pretty much anything you could think of for a long period of time. I've heard anywhere from a couple of weeks to a couple of months. So. That's where the origins came from. And then when the Spanish came and colonized uh, Mesoamerica, they, instead of trying to squash the entire uh, celebration of, of, of the dead, is they uh, put it together, they synchronized it with, uh, with the Catholic religion. So they toned down a little bit of the death part of it, and then they kind of increased the celebration part of it to where they came to a happy medium. Of, uh, of the art of the celebration in itself. Now it's, uh, it's a period where you sit and you wait. November 2nd is a specific day where they believe the veil is the thinnest. Where those that have gone before you will come back and visit you. And when, uh, when they come and visit you, 
they, it's a celebration. It's just like when grandma and grandpa come and visit or whatever, that you set up, you have a meal, you have a celebration, you set things up for them. And that's where you get the traditional altar. We don't have an altar here. Um, this is more of a niche, but the altar would have things on it that the person or people you're celebrating uh, it liked. There would be uh, everything from their favorite beer and cigarettes to a change of clothes, uh, soap and water to wash up with, um, artifacts from them, uh, mementos that they had, and uh, they that would be their way, your way, and their way of celebrating their return. Um, to get back to the artwork aspect of it, the uh, the, uh, the calavera as we see it now, or the skeleton as we see it now, has not been a predominant factor in the ancient part of the celebrations. Uh, it wasn't until Jose Guadalupe Posada started using the etchings of the skeleton in the turn of the century newspapers and broadsheets that the skeleton started taking on the persona. And I'm sure most of you have seen it, it's the Katrina. I don't have a Katrina. There is one in the book, but the Katrina is the one that sort of started it all off. Jose Guadalupe Posada uses, used his etchings in the image of the Calavera, the skeleton, as a way of satirizing the political figures and the political atmosphere at the time. So it was real easy to make a skeleton look like one of the politicians and be able to make fun of him without exactly you know, just completely attacking them like they do in the modern press. So that is where you get the transition f to the modern use of the skeletons and then the satirical look at the skeletons. And everything that you see in Day of the Dead or El Dia de los Muertos is happy or it's celebratory. There's nothing morbid, nothing evil, nothing drippy, fleshy, Halloween-y about Day of the Dead because that's not what it's about. It's a celebration of uh, those people that have gone before you coming and visiting you. So it kind of it's a way of remembering everyone in your generations because if you're remembered, you never die basically. So if you're always remembered or somebody's always waiting for you to come and visit them, you or the image of you is never going to die. And that's another reason why that this exists. Now, I'm going to turn it over to Carrie. To say something. <laughs> so she's going to run down. Carrie's very shy. She's going to run down, I guess, some of the, the way you put the artwork together. Oh, okay. Um, well, one of the first things that we did when we decided to put together this book was we started to go visit Day of the Dead celebrations all over the country. And one of the ones that we really had a great time at was at the Hollywood Forever Cemetery. If you, has, has anybody here gone to the Hollywood Forever Cemetery to see this celebration? Oh, I have to tell you, you've been amazing. Go online if you ever have a chance, do this. You walk into the cemetery, I think it opens around 5 or 6 in the evening, and everywhere are altars and ofrendas, and some of them are fairly small. And then you have some that are three stories high. And you have organizations that have put them together. You also have just families or individuals or society, some communities from Mexico actually come up every year to put together these ofrendas. And you'll walk, you'll walk through them and each one is completely different. And then at, when it gets really dark, the lights go on and either they're candles or they're, or they're uh, lit, some of them actually with electricity. And what we started looking at um, there are also booths everywhere with artwork. And so we got to pick out some artists that we really thought we'd like to work with for this book, in, in addition, of course, to Jerry. But one of the things that really struck us was that a lot of the artwork wasn't necessarily what you would consider traditional. Even on the ofrenda, some of them would have uh, like video screens, and they would have music playing, and they would have shots of, of the departed on them. It was as though we just can't hold things still. We keep pushing things forward, and so um, the traditional keeps evolving. And that made us really determined in this book, not just to teach our, our readers, our crafters, and artists, 
how to recreate traditional Day of the Dead art, we really wanted to give them some ideas for things that were much more cutting edge. And so that's where